Alright, this is uh this is my 555 flyback driver. Um sorry if I can't think too well right now because it's like one or two in the morning right now. Anyway, that's a 555 circuit right there. It's just a 555. This is a timing capacitor which is about ten nanofarads I guess. It's just a little terminal thing so that I can just unscrew it and put a new capacitor in for different frequencies uh that's a 100k ohm potent uh potentiometer uh for frequency adjust the uh duty cycle resistor is 2.2 kilo ohms um it's connected to a radio uh on pin 5 of the 555 to uh audio modulate it uh RFP 460s um the heat sink gets hot really fast because uh I'm using 34 I mean 35 volts and about 6 amps at the max so that's pretty high wattage it'll actually dim the lights just a little bit uh to drive the 555 it's a 12 volt transformer good for I guess 1 amp uh that big blue capacitor is for smoothing it as well as those gray ones right there that's a bridge rectifier uh, it's probably good for two amps or something like that uh, this big blue capacitor is 2200 microfarads those uh, capacitors are each 75 microfarads so in all uh, 150 microfarads for those which would make 2,350 microfarads and all for smoothing. Power supply is a re rewound microwave transformer. It puts out 35 volts AC or probably 30, 30 volts AC and then it's rectified with this 4 amp bridge rectifier which is too little but it does alright in these small runs and then an 8,000 microfarad smoothing capacitor it's 35 volts out DC to the flyback and uh, I've got my ammeter hooked up right now uh, but I'm not going to be able to show you this because I have to keep one finger on the uh, switch to make sure I can cut it off if anything goes wrong uh, I forgot to put a chick to uh, glue a chicken stick to this uh, so you're just gonna have to wait while I um, find something to put the wire on to show you how big these sparks are. They're prob they start at about four to six inches uh, when it's at lower frequency. When it's at higher frequency, it's just really, really hot sparks. It's the hottest sparks I've ever had uh, with a flyback transformer, and within maybe 30 seconds to a minute, the flyback's pretty warm. Uh, I don't really like how warm it gets actually but uh, I still have this flyback which is also pretty big and then all these they're all DC I believe an AC one would probably have even hotter arcs but they're harder to find apparently so let me find something to set the camel on alright this is a uh, high frequency, so it's hot, really high current arcs. Uh, when it's completely shorted, it's about six or seven amps, and when I, and when the sparks about an inch, it's maybe four or five amps. All right, I, I can only do really short runs because the RFP 460 heats up really bad. It's only using this one, not this one. This one's unconnected right now. Uh, and it's got that resonant capacitor, which I think in my case is one point one point one two microfarads. It's too small, uh, but and it heats up really bad, and usually it dies and it sorts out my microwave transformer, and that'll blow my rectifier at some point, I'm sure. Anyway. Looks like I blew it. Fucking hell. Oh, 
All right, there we go. These are thicker and hotter than my neon transformer arcs because I believe it's high wattage. It uh, dims my light just a little bit, but it dims it. Let me turn the radio on so that you can hear it. It's it sounds bad right now, but uh, when it's little power, it usually sounds a lot better. I don't want to run it for too long because the heat the heat sink's already pretty warm. Uh, the MOSFET is just as warm as heat sink, so I got that figured out. <laughs> anyway. Alright, uh, I can probably pump a little bit more power when the radio's off though, so, uh, this video's already six minutes long, so I gotta hurry up. Uh, I'm gonna drop. I'm gonna have the arc small right now, so you can see how fast it'll burn the. Uh, how fast it'll turn the uh, alligator clip red. I already started this uh, sparkle because it got so hot. Let me see if I can find something that has a, let me see if I can find a small thin wire, uh, so I can show you how fast it'll melt it. Well, I haven't really tried yet, but I know it's going to be fast, because even when I was only pumping maybe 20 watts, it melted pretty fast. But anyway. Hehehe. <laughs> By the way, the base that this is on is like uh, a five ply wood. Uh, I just threw it together, but I like it that, like this because it's all open and stuff. So uh, if I need to change a value of something, it's easy. Let me try to find something that I can use as a chicken stick because I want to show you how high the voltage is. Uh, but. It goes through the insulation too easy, so I don't want to be anywhere near that because that's some hundred watts pumping through there. So, all right, I found something. Uh, just gotta find some way of securing it on here. Uh, I really should have done this before I started the video because it's already eight minutes, so I've only got two more minutes. <laughs> hmm. see. I'll just stick a wire in here and tie my fly back to it. Don't freak out. I'm going to uh, make sure that the wire is not going to come out or anything and drop and shock me to death or something like that. But Alright, this will work good enough. Yep. Alright, let me turn the frequency lower. Yep, that'll do it. This right here, that's about three inches. And it starts with no problem. Four inches. Yep, about four inches long. Wow, I can see some really strong corona coming off of the high voltage wire right here because this thing is grounded, so. Says to, says to be the highest voltage I've ever created with a small transformer like this other than Tesla coils. All right.